Daylight robbery with a firearm and a handwritten note. A Singaporean auxiliary police officer has been charged after he allegedly robbed a moneylender in Jurong East on Monday while on duty. He made off with over $24,000 and was arrested within five hours of the crime. It's the first case of robbery with a firearm in Singapore in 15 years. And it's the second time unlucky for the shop in question. Geraldine Yap explains. Armed with this gun, Mahadi Mohamed Mokhtar allegedly robbed a money lender at Jurong Gateway Road on Monday afternoon. The 38-year-old didn't reveal or use the weapon. Instead, he showed this note to staff at OT Credit, who handed him the cash before he fled. About $17,500 has been recovered. Mahadi had allegedly deposited some of the stolen cash into the bank account of his 34-year-old female friend and repaid his debts to unlicensed moneylenders. And as for this licensed moneylender, misfortune has struck again. Last November, four men got away with $48,000 after allegedly robbing staff at Knife Point. They were arrested within 12 hours of the crime. The unit is located near the J-Cube shopping centre and along a walkway that leads to a stretch of shops and F&B outlets. Now there are also places for people to sit at, so this is a relatively populated area for most part of the day. But most people we spoke to said they didn't know about the robbery until after it had happened. Oh, I didn't know. Because uh, it's so quiet on Monday. Police say Mahadi reported to work at ATOS headquarters in Corporation Drive on Monday. He drew his firearm prior to his deployment, changed out of his uniform and left with a revolver without authorization. He allegedly committed the crime before going back to work. The man involved in the armed robbery abused the firearm and trusted to him to carry out his duties. Police officers worked swiftly to secure his arrest aided by images from police cameras and short CCTVs. We managed to do so without harm being caused to the public, given the risk that a man was allegedly carrying fire. If convicted, Mahadi faces life imprisonment and at least six strokes of the cane. His friend, 34-year-old Noor Shana Mohammed Taib, has also been charged with dishonestly receiving stolen property. Eight other people have been arrested for the same offence in connection to the case. Uh, ATOS says it has stringent policies in place to ensure that its auxiliary police officers are fit for duty and to carry firearms. In response to CNA's queries, it adds that measures include a comprehensive background screening, which is approved by relevant authorities. Officers must also submit a mandatory financial declaration each year. The Security Association Singapore says this isolated incident should not be a reflection of the auxiliary police force or the industry as a whole. It adds that the auxiliary police force may want to consider a review of the processes to see if more could have been done, uh, like in identifying people who may have problems. The case could be made uh, for checks on the financial backgrounds of people working as auxiliary police officers or security officers because... They are, of course, tasked with protecting property, you know, and, uh, and, and protecting premises. However, we need to balance it out with the fact that uh, you don't want the background checks to be so stringent such that they act as an unreasonable barrier uh, of entry. Let's take a look at some other cases of armed robberies involving firearms that have taken place in Singapore. In 2006, a robber snatched nearly $4,000 from a 4D outlet at Sun Plaza shopping centre. He then fired a shot at a security officer who was giving chase. The security officer, with the help of a bystander, later apprehended the robber. In 1987, a gang of seven armed with three revolvers made off with $1.3 million in gold and cash after robbing a jewellery shop in Commonwealth Lane. All were arrested with some nabbed in Malaysia. The last member was only caught 20 years later. In 1984, shots were exchanged between the police and robbers and a car chase ensued, starting from Shenton Way to Chinatown. A detective had tried to arrest a man on the suspicion of armed robbery. Kok Kok Soon then hijacked a lorry and the lorry driver was later found dead with a gunshot wound in his neck. Kor maintained his innocence on the murder charge but was sentenced to hang for firing at a police officer.